Who really knows the world as others find it? Who sees the colors, hears the sounds in just the same way? They say you need to walk a mile in a man's shoes to understand him. Maybe that's the trouble with snakes. No feet, no shoes. They're just so different. Missouri is home to more than 50 types of snakes. Some, like the northern red belly, are less than a foot long. Others, like the bull snake, grow to seven feet and more. Most are elusive creatures, always with us, but trying, trying, trying to remain apart. Our senses give shape to the world, texture, meaning. They define what it is to live on this planet. So it is too for the snakes, searching, probing, adjusting moment by moment. With a flick of the tongue, a garter snake gathers bits of air, molecules of information. These are pressed against special nerve endings in the roof of the mouth, which help snakes smell the air, letting them know whether a meal or a mate is near. Life comes to us in patterns of sound and silence. But snakes have no ears to the world outside. They don't hear sounds, they feel them as vibrations through the bones of their jaws. Some venomous snakes have an extra sense. Through a pit on each side of the face, between the eye and the nostril, they detect the body heat of nearby prey. It's an infrared sensor, a unique way of knowing the world. The snake's eyes are always open, protected only by a thin, clear scale. The venomous pit vipers have vertical pupils, while those of the other snakes are round. Some can see for a long distance, but others see only a bit beyond their faces. One of the prettiest snakes we have in Missouri is red milk snake, and this is it. They're very secretive, so most people don't ever get to see them. You can feel his muscles and his bones. You can feel him move, besides just feeling what his skin feels like when you put your finger on him. We reach out, we feel things, through a very sensitive skin, one that constantly replaces the old cells with the new. The dry skin of snakes, though, is made of scales, some smooth, others ridged, which they shed all at once. It happens several times a year and gives the snake room to grow. In spring, the snakes emerge from scattered winter retreats 
shared now and then by a few different species. Many stay close to these dens throughout the summer, living out their lives on a small piece of land. But others roam as much as a mile away. At Mingo National Wildlife Refuge in southeast Missouri, where bluffs and swamp come together, the snakes have to migrate as they leave dens in rocky ledges and work their way to the watery lands below. Though they spend much of their lives alone, snakes in the spring will meet and mate, or try to. Successful mating lasts a few minutes or a few hours before the snakes once again go their separate ways. Some snakes, including the red-bellied snakes, garter snakes, and the venomous kinds, bear live young. The other snakes lay eggs several weeks after mating. In a month or two, the young work their way out of soft, leathery shells. From the beginning, they're on their own, armed with all the instincts they'll ever have. While eating, for us, is an everyday chore, for the snakes, a meal here, a meal there, every few days will do, and they'll sip water when it's handy. Since they have no arms or legs, their mouths and bodies are specially developed to help them hunt and eat. The black rat snake is a constrictor whose muscles kill prey by suffocation. Snakes eat everything whole because they can't really chew. Their recurved teeth only help them to grasp and swallow a meal. So their jaws are built to let them take in more than a mouthful. Only the venomous snakes come equipped with fangs. Through these, the snakes inject venom when they choose to, not in every bite. Venom helps them not only to kill, but also to digest a meal. Different snakes have different diets. A rough green snake prefers an insect, while a midland brown snake goes after worms. Garter snakes, like some people, find frogs a tasty meal, except they eat the whole thing, leaving nothing to waste. Bull snakes keep mice under control, while water snakes eat the slower fish in a stream.
As summer heat begins to sizzle, many snakes become more active hunters in the cool of the evening. It's not easy to cope with the world when just about all you are is a mouth and a tail and a very primitive brain. For a snake, danger is everywhere. A young water snake could easily become a meal for a bass. Red-tailed hawks mean danger from above. And milk snakes, like other king snakes, don't hesitate to eat a smaller serpent. But being eaten isn't the only hazard. A road makes an easy place for a snake to rest or travel until a car comes by. Scientists have found that many drivers go out of their way to kill snakes on the road. A cruel fate for an innocent traveler. There's not much a snake can do to protect itself from deadly drivers. But over millions of years, they have developed some unique defenses against other threats. The rattlesnake developed its rattles on the ancient prairies of North America, where wandering herds of hooved animals roamed. The sound of the hollow scales warned the large beasts away and saved the snakes from being trampled. The hiss of the bull snake protects it too by letting other creatures know it's near. The small ring-necked snake uses the bright underside of its tail to draw predators away from its head. The most impressive actor, the one with the most complex defense, is the hog nose. It's a very harmless snake that does its best to look bad. At the first sign of danger, it spreads its neck like a cobra to scare the attacker away. When it's thoroughly frightened, the hog nose flips on its back, playing dead until the danger has disappeared. Camouflage is the first defense for many snakes, including the venomous kinds. The mild-mannered copperhead lives mainly on dry, timbered lands, hidden by leaves on the ground. Though it's the most common of Missouri's five types of venomous snakes, nobody in the state has ever been killed by its bite, though it's still worth avoiding. The copperhead's cousin is the cottonmouth, which lives in the swamps of southeast Missouri, though it's also found in Ozark streams. When threatened, the cottonmouth may open wide to drive danger away. Its dark color can be confused with that of the water snakes, who also live in the wetlands. But the water snakes are harmless, though sometimes feisty creatures. The largest and most venomous of Missouri's pit vipers is the timber rattlesnake. It lives in rocky, wooded lands. But as people move into the countryside, the timber rattlesnake finds it more and more difficult to survive. The pygmy rattlesnake is the smallest of Missouri's venomous snakes, 
It lives on rocky glades in a few southern counties. Its close relative, the Massasauga, inhabits wet prairies and marshes. But as these lands are disappearing, so too is the snake. You can hike a long time through fields and forests before you find the snake. When you finally do, it's likely to rush away or try to remain hidden. What kind of snake is it? Maybe it's a racer. Let's just leave it alone. Long ago, a tale was told in which a snake was called the villain. And the story stuck. But what if the snakes could tell their own tales? Who then would the villains be? The snakes are not indeed like you or me, or even quite like each other. Each snake has its own set of habits. You couldn't build better mousetraps than the black rat or bull snakes or camouflage yourself more easily than the green snakes do. It's a simple life each leads, warming in the sun and cooling in the shadows, resting quietly, moving gracefully through the natural world, to which we all, in the end, belong. <laughs> 